Hello BookTube. It's Tuesday and that means Tag Tuesday here on BookTube and I have a couple of tags that I want to do today. One I was tagged by Michael K. Vaughn and then another one, a great tag, I wasn't tagged by anybody as is kind of predictable these days since nobody tags me for anything. Uh, it's the 25 questions tag which was created by Maza BookTuber uh, who did not tag me. Uh, and I saw it on Johanna's channel uh, and she did not tag me. I saw it on Michael's channel, Fit to be Read, and he did not tag me. And I saw it on Philip Chase's channel, and he also did not tag me. <laughs> so I will leave links to all of their channels because all of their versions of this tag were fantastic. Uh, and I want to give my own. This is because this tag is right up my alley. It's 25 nosy personal questions of exactly the type that I love. Uh, so let's get straight to it because 25 questions is not a small number, but we can believe, we can. Uh, whiz through a whole bunch of these. Uh, number one, what's your channel about? <clears throat> My channel is about books. Every once in a while, I will digress about the weather or tech or politics, but it's mostly about books and Frida. <laughs> uh, number two, how old are you? I am 28. Uh, number three, what's your relationship status? I have been uh, unhappily married and happily divorced from my Deb, I don't even know, 11 times, something like that. Uh, under uh, probably 10 different monarchs. <laughs> it's, it's, it hasn't been pleasant at all. Uh, number four, where did you do, did you go to college slash occupation? I did indeed go to college, and my occupation is that I am a book reviewer. I'm a book critic, a book columnist, and a book section editor. My whole life is, is caught up in books. Aside from playing with the bean, talking with the bean in our own language, walking with the bean, which has nothing to do with reading or English language at all. But apart from that, it's all books. All I do is read books and write about what I read and write about what other people have written. That's all I do. So I am, I'm a book critic, I'm a book columnist, and I'm a book section editor. Uh, let's see here. Uh, number five is where are you from slash where do you live? Where I'm from is a matter of considerable scholarly debate. Is it... Uh, Keokuk, Iowa? Is it Nashua, New Hampshire? Is it right here in Boston? Is it a small town on the shores of the Black Sea in what is now known as Turkey? Scholars have not decided. There, is, uh, there are schools of scholarship for each one. But where do I, uh, do I live now? I live in a leafy part of greater Boston uh, that is getting less leafy with every year. <laughs> more and more condos going up everywhere. Uh, then number six is looking back, what would you have told your 10-year-old self? Um, Ten-year-olds are notoriously pre-sentient. It, it doesn't do any good to tell them anything. They're not going to remember. They're not going to pay any attention. They're not able to pay attention. But my 18-year-old self? Oh my, would I have advice for my 18-year-old self? Lots and lots of advice. And probably the number one piece of advice that I would give my 18-year-old self is that it isn't just an adult sellout sentiment when someone tells you that you should suffer now, in other words, at, 80, at age 18, in order to be happy later. Do some things now that you don't necessarily want in order to be happy a little bit later. 18-year-olds tend to look on that as just, oh, well, you know, adults are all ground down and defeated, so of course they would say that to me, but that isn't true. I'm going to follow my heart, man. I'm going to do what I like, man. Typically, at least in our little corner of booktube, that results in people majoring in English. <laughs> who have an aptitude for science or engineering, uh, but who think, no, no, I, my heart's not in that. Yeah, put your heart aside. <laughs> for, that would be my advice to an 18-year-old me, would be uh, instead of, of, of picking a school by location or by friends, pick a really good school, get many, many uh, prestigious degrees, and work like crazy. Work like the, the shallow... Uh, manipulative people that you hate who are all around you work like them don't become like them but work like them to get somewhere random chance that i ended up liking where i got but it, most people don't uh but i wouldn't tell my 10 year old self anything <laughs> uh number seven tell us about your family well i've mentioned it on my on this channel many many times me sainted ma uh who is who has long since gone to her reward she has been nagging god in heaven for our well, 10 years now, more than that. Uh, but for a long time, she and I were friends, which, you know, uh, some of you, I guess if you're very young, might think, well, sure, that goes without saying. It doesn't go without saying at all. I, I was lucky to have it happen. I don't believe that it happens with many people. 
I, I got a chance to be her. It certainly doesn't happen to many people in my kind of background at all. I should put it that way. I, it could easily not have happened with me, and it did. Random chance threw me into a, a situation where I was living with me, sainted Ma, both of us alone with dogs in a huge house. So we got to know each other, and we came to like each other a lot. It was random chance. Parents don't always like their kids. The kids don't always like the parents. As some of you will know, and maybe others of you just flat out refuse to believe. Instead, I was lucky. I was really lucky. Uh, let's see here. Number eight. What is your favorite holiday? I have two. Uh, but one of them is the 4th of July, and that is extremely personal to me, but it's not going to be possible uh, even to observe it in, in to observe it in any kind of way that I would consider palatable. It's just a couple of years. That's not going to be possible anymore. Uh, but the other one is New Year's, the, the transition from one year to the next which New Year's Day is a holiday, so I guess I can call it that, but it means a lot more than that to me. But we're a long way off from that, so I don't even think about it. I'm not feeling the undertow at all. Uh, let's see here. Number nine, you have no budget. What is your dream vacation? I know what my dream vacation would be. If I had no budget at all, what I would do would be uh, cars. I don't know how to drive, and Frida is not welcome on trains or buses. Usually, she's not welcome on trains or buses. Uh, uh, and I don't want to fly. But I do want to travel. And not to the Grand Canyon. I want to travel to you. <laughs> I, want, I want to, for Frida and I to go on the road and travel everywhere to all of your houses and go and stay for a little bit and then call a, ca a car and drive somewhere else. Stopping whenever Frida needs to stop, that sort of thing. Now, if my no budget, my unlimited funds could make that happen on Amtrak, so much the better. I think maybe it's po it would be possible for me to do a little bit of traveling with a 10-pound dog on Amtrak. I haven't really looked into it because I don't plan on doing it, but if I had an unlimited amount of budget, that's what I would do. I wouldn't be going to see the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls. I'd be going to see all of you. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Number 10, name your biggest pet peeves. Uh, I have a list that I keep, Steve's Pet Peeves, uh, that I've been doing for years. I update it all the time. Some of them are 50 years old, and some of them are fairly new. It would take a long time to go through that list. I, jet it, I jotted down some here. Oh, right. Uh, fad speak uh, is one where some phraseology is going around. This, this, this pernicious habit has been drastically enabled by social media, <laughs> drastically so, uh, but even so, it existed before then, where all of a sudden somebody is talking the exact same way. Uh, it hit me in the feels. I need this book in my life right now. I'm really vibing with this. It's really a vibe for this. I was I was today years old when I learned all that sort of, all the sort of just hive mind phraseology that you get on Twitter, for instance. But people import it into their real lives from Twitter, and suddenly that's what they're talking like, and especially writing like. So that I, with someone like that, if I watch a video of them speaking, and I have no idea when the video was made, I'll be able to, to date it within a month of accuracy, of year and month, based on these mindless verbal ticks and memes that they, they've hoovered up without even thinking about it. Uh, Another one is uh, ostentatious zillennial tiredness. You get that a lot. <laughs> Again, the, this also is fueled by social media, where uh, the all-knowing among us, the, the young people among us, act like they are just so bone-draggingly tired all the time. And it's not. It's very much not because they don't sleep because they're vaping. Instead, it's because they. if you press them, you will learn. They're tired because it's incredibly wearying to be so right all the time about everything i don't think about any subject on which i am not completely right and all of you are so wrong and it's just it's such a burden to need to teach so many people all day long oh, by by five i'm just dragging that kind of ostentatious, fake, stupid, navel-gazing, zillennial tiredness gets old really, really fast. And another another pet peeve is a little bit bigger, of course, it's bigger than both of those put together. It's a serious thing, but it's still a pet peeve, which is the fas this fashionable racism that's everywhere online now. It's everywhere in social media, all over YouTube, 
all over, unfortunately, BookTube, including our little corner of BookTube, where, where you can say things of just virulently racist nature and get away with it. Just, just completely get away with it. If you're aiming it at white people, or if you're aiming it in what you consider to be a positive way at non-white people. One way or another, though, it's it's the kind of verbiage that you used to have to go into the back hills of Kentucky and, and listen in on a Klan rally meeting at night when the bourbon had been going around to hear anything like it. And now, <laughs> it's, 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 it's language, it's the kind of coarsely racist language that comes straight out of the Jim Crow South. And... It's not even thought of. No, no one blinks an eye at it anymore. Uh, a tenured Rutgers professor can say we need to wipe out all all white people, and no one even blinks an eye. And she's not even given a cautionary disciplinary meeting, much less fired fired from every university anywhere in the world. Not, it's just completely normal now. Completely normal, especially when you're aiming it at white people. It, 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 I've, I've heard from many, many young people on and off BookTube that it's not actually possible to be racist to white people. You can, do, you can say anything that you want. It's not possible to do because they don't really have a culture. They're not really people. <laughs> Again, stop me if this sounds familiar. So but those are just three. I could go on forever about my pet peeves. I could go on forever about them. Uh, then number 11 is what book changed your life? No book change my life books don't change my life uh then number 12 is what simple invention improved the world here i'm going to say indoor plumbing uh especially showers and the bath the bathtub the ability for people to suddenly immerse themselves in water and clean themselves on a regular basis if not if not every day then certainly once a week indoor plumbing made that possible in a way that it really wasn't before and that has gone a long way towards making large parts of the world smell a lot better than they once did, than they did for 5,700 years. So I'm going to say indoor plumbing. Uh, also, I don't know how many of you have had ever had to deal with an outhouse. Uh, it's not pleasant. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the weather outside, it's not pleasant. <laughs> better by far to have your outhouse in the house. Uh, then let's see. Number 13 is your favorite movies slash TV shows. Again, like with Pet Peeves, this would be a very, very long list. There wouldn't be any one standout, I don't think, except for the actual number one position. Like, for instance, movies, uh, I've mentioned 12 Angry Men, uh, Patton, Beckett, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, also especially my number one pick, The Lion in Winter, is my, is my favorite movie. But And for TV, there would be the original Star Trek, uh, Deadwood. Uh, what else do I have here? The original Law and Order for almost the whole of its length. Uh, uh, just the last couple of seasons, maybe I would say the writing started to get no notoriously, just hilariously bad. But uh, those first six seasons are a miracle. Uh, All in the Family. Uh, it's not broadcast anymore. I'm pretty sure you can't buy it anymore. It'll never be rerun anymore. Uh, and because people here, because we live in a, in a very degraded age, the 21st century is a very degraded age, where people just want to score points against other people. They want to make other people feel miserable or afraid, and they want to do it with the most surface knee-jerk reaction to anything. And that usually means just words, words plucked and free of context. And all the family has plenty of those words that you could use. If you watch it, you'll see that it's all being done in a thoughtful uh, and nuanced context, but Who's going to do that in the 21st century? Uh, but for TV as well as for movies, I do have a number one. And that's The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> yes, Superman. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. <laughs> the Adventures of Superman is probably my favorite. Uh, number 14 is Describe Yourself Using Three Fictional Characters. Uh, I'm glad it's asking me to do this instead of people that I've known. Although I think this kind of a question is better asked of people who know you than yourself. Naturally, I'm going to say three brooding romance heroes. I mean, come on. Uh, but at least, at least since I'm the one who's answering, it won't be people piping up Ignatius Riley or Q or the Squire of Gothos or anything like that. Any of the usual answers that I've got. Uh, number 15 is what was your dream job? Not sure of the past tense here. Unless it's when you were a kid, what was your dream job? Uh, but I, uh, when I was a kid, I thought jobs were pestilential, just in general. It wasn't I, I was going to pick one that I liked. 
but I am perfectly okay with the jobs that I have now. They are thoroughly saturated with books. They are entirely about books, and that's fine by me. Uh, number 16 is, if magic was real, what spell would you learn first? It would be a variation of the limitless budget. It would be a teleportation spell for me and Frida. Where I pack a bag with a, a jar of her food and uh, a tablet for reading, and I use a teleportation spell to visit you all, <laughs> one at a time. And we just show up, and we have a fun, we have fun, a fun visit. Or maybe we don't. <laughs> Uh, it'd be teleportation, definitely, and not just for visiting people either, for going everywhere, from bouncing all around. Uh, 17 is f share a favorite childhood memory. Uh, it's all running in the grass and smelling dried poop. It, they aren't human memories, so, so they wouldn't do you any good. I have lots and lots of them, but they wouldn't do you any good. Uh, so, <laughs> so let's just move on. Uh, number 18 is what is your favorite social media platform and why? Well, that would be YouTube of course, uh, specifically BookTube. I am a YouTuber, and uh, and I really enjoy it, especially in these last couple of days when I've been reminded of how much I enjoy it. Uh, number 19 is, if you could pick any book character, who would you spend the day with? Uh, I would spend the day with almost all of the characters in a book called The Bookseller's Apprentice. Uh, number 20 is, what is your spirit animal? <laughs> this is fairly... A uh, fairly no argument here, much as I might like to say something cool, like a peregrine falcon or a dolphin or something. It's dogs. <laughs> it's dogs. Dogs are my spirit animal. Uh, number 21 is, what old person thing do you do? I'm 28 years old. I have pillowy pecs, a uh, dancer's waist, an eight-board abs, uh, A-frame shoulders, and, and uh, beasting lips, and come-hither smoldering eyes. So I don't do any old person things at all. I uh, hope I die before I get old. Uh, number 22 is, do you have a hidden talent? I actually do have a hidden talent. I almost never get to use it, but it's packing. It's space management. Believe it or not, I almost never get a chance to use it. I almost never bother to use it. But if, for instance, you had a room that was fairly small and you had X number of things that you wanted to fit inside it, I would be very good at that if you had a for instance, the back of a van or the, or the trunk of a car that you need packed. I can, it's been my experience that I can usually get 30 or 40% more stuff in that space than most people can. And not from cramming it, just from seeing the space and where things go and how. Uh, but I never get a chance to use that, so it doesn't, doesn't really, it's very hidden. It's a very hidden talent. Uh, number 23 is where do you see yourself in five years? Well, I'll be 33. Uh, that's pretty old. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'll still be ambulatory, maybe, maybe lucid. <laughs> uh, number 24 is share an item and tell us its significance. I have many items all around me here. I can pick one just at random. It's this thing. This is my, uh, my water bottle, my water thermos. And it's uh, a bigger version of one that I got up in Vermont when I was visiting Mark Richardson and his family. I had always wanted to try this. I'd heard all sorts of things about how you should always be drinking water and drink a lot of it every day, that you'll really feel better if you do. Uh, so I got one of those uh, at a shop up in Vermont and started drinking water up there. The water at the house, the old house in Vermont is fantastic. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything in it at all. It's just water from their own well. Uh, and I experienced right away that those people saying that all those years were right absolutely right. The only problem with that that metal canister that I got up in Vermont is that it was too small. I was constantly refilling it. Uh, so I ordered a bigger one on Amazon and I'm never without it. I'm never without it. I, I absolutely love it. This video is as long as I go without water. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just refill it all the time and it really does. The, the, the benefits are really there. It really, it's impossible for me to put into words but it really does make you feel better if you're well hydrated all day long. And the reason, the way you'll know if you're not well hydrated will be your pee. Is your pee yellow? Is, or God forbid, is your pee bright yellow? If your pee is yellow, then you're not getting enough water. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So judge by that and have more water accordingly. <laughs> uh, and then number 25 is now tag some people. And again, like I said last week, why on earth would I do that when YouTube has gone out of its way not to tag me? 
I'm on my own here. <laughs> so, so I will ostentatiously not tag you to do this tag, just as I was ostentatiously not tagged by, what's the rogues gallery again? Uh, Maza Booktuber, Johanna, uh, Fit to be Read, and Philip Chase. All four of those uh, rogues in my rogues gallery intentionally ignored me when it came to tagging with this tag. So, of course, I'm going to ignore everybody. <sighs> Maybe next week's tags will be a little more congenial. Here's hoping. <laughs> I will wrap this up, and I will see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.